Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening in the last episode. We said our goodbyes to most everyone here in Mabe Village, where we began this grand adventure through Koholint. In this episode, we are going to be heading to the library in Koholint to do one final thing. There is a lone important book there that we have never read, that I think that we should read. You can only read the fine print of this book if you have the magnifying lens. Keep in mind that this is not required, but it is very, very helpful. And that is not the book that I want to read. Which one is it? Is it you? How to handle your shield? No, I... How to handle your shield? Like a pro! That sounds very interesting. I'll have to check that out some of the time. Oh, wait, we're leaving. Dark Secrets and Mysteries of Koholint. Do you really want to read it? Yes, we do. We want to read that. Round and round, the passageways of the egg. And then it will give us some directions. You want to memorize these arrows because they can be one of four different possible layouts and they are different every single time that you go through this adventure. So, take note of this. Make sure to keep track of which one it is. Hmm, this book reeks of secrets. Once again, this is not required. You can go through what we're about to do without that. However, there's not really anything else I want to say, but it's time for us to head up to the egg and wake the windfish. Now, I could cut this out, but I feel like there's some things we need to talk about. I do want to say that, even though this might not be as cinematic of a game as, say, Majora's Mask or Wind Waker like my other Zelda Let's Plays were, I still think Link's Awakening is a wonderful game, and I hope that I encourage some of you to buy it on the eShop, because it's a modest price on the eShop, and, you know... Most people own 3DSs by this point, and I feel like it's a great game that gets skipped over by a lot of people because it's a Game Boy game and a lot of people don't expect all stuff all that great. It's got some very artistic themes in it. I feel like the entire story is a metaphor for growing up, and I've told my theories on that. And I like it a lot. Simple as that. It's just as simple as, in some ways, I like it. Great music, great world, it doesn't, you know, not every Zelda game takes place in Hyrule. And I think it's a dang good game. But there's something that I need to tell you, and that is the fact that up until recently, even though I'd played through each of the dungeons quite a few times, I had never seen the ending of Link's Awakening. I had no idea how this story ended, and because of that, when we get to the ending, I will have my legitimate reaction, my legitimate first reaction to the ending of this. Now, some people might say that there is no way that I could have avoided the ending all this time, you know, because I went to the Zelda Symphony and the ending is shown there. And who is with me will attest to the fact that I looked away, I did not do anything there. Um, now that we're going in, I just want to show this screen really quick. We have all those keys. We have some secret medicine, so we are well equipped for the battles ahead. We have all eight instruments of the sirens. I have full upgrades for arrows, bombs, magic powder, shield, sword. I have all three ocarina songs, of course, because I wouldn't have made it this far without them. So... How about we go inside? How about we climb this mountain? And... Nothing else to use to end a Zelda adventure, but the ocarina. Let's play the song that Marin taught us, and in a way, Marin is going to indeed help us get off this island just like she was trying to before. The time has come. The windfish awaits. Enter the egg. Hoot, hoot. Inside the windfish's egg. You are first greeted by nothing but a drop-off and some very, very eerie atmosphere. I want to say this right now. As we go down into the depths and we walk through this repeating area, I just want to say that this is probably the most haunting area to me. 
I know that some people might think that I'm wasting time by saying this, because it goes without saying, though, but just everything. The sound, the look, the feel, how this is nothing like you expected. It rings true on the same levels that I feel like the service of the moon does in Majora's Mask when you go there. I won't dare spoil that in Majora's Mask. Watch my Let's Play. Play the game for yourself, in fact, to see what I mean. That's what this does for me. And I want you to look, try to imagine all the areas that we've been through inside this egg, and just try to imagine them all as one great big area. To me, I always pictured the inside of the eggshell being lined with all these plus sign things, gravity just being defied so that you're walking on the walls of the eggshell and just have it all come together like kind of like an MC Escher painting. That's what it always seemed like to me. And oh God, that always creeps me out, just that sound. After you've walked through the correct steps, down there is our final battle. It is very, very helpful if you have at least some magic powder. Just letting you know, having a lot of arrows is also very useful. Let us not waste any more time and go down. We were born of nightmares. To take over this world, we made the windfish sleep endlessly. If the windfish doesn't wake up, this island will never disappear. We would have been the masters of this place, but you had to come here and disrupt our plans. Hehe. <laughs> you can never defeat us. Let's rumble! The Shadow Nightmares, our final battle on Koalint Island and the Nightmare of the Windfish itself, responsible for making it slumber and for making this island never disappear, making those who are on this island never leave it. The embodiment of never growing up, the embodiment of never letting go of anything. As a nightmare, what does it do better than assume the form of exactly what you are afraid of? And how more fitting than Aghanim to be the force to oppose Link? Especially when this is the Link that had his adventure in Link to the Past and the Oracle games. As somebody who has a lot of nightmares and has always had issues with them, this has always been something that I've considered... This has been something that I consider accurately represented in every way, shape, and form of just how nightmares feel. It starts off by making you feel like you don't belong, that you are out of place, that just give you that feeling of feeling scared. There's nothing more scary than just feeling like you don't belong and you are in the domain of a nightmare and that it's effectively trying to rule this reality and does so by taking on what you are most afraid of. In fact, it may even give you a false sense of security by turning into something that you relate with, well, being easy. Here we have Moldorm, who is the boss of the Tail Cave, and not really the first thing that jumps to people's minds when they think difficult. Well, maybe. I'm not really going to say that Moldorm is easy, but it certainly is not the hardest battle that you're going to encounter. After giving you a false sense of security, it often will strike while the iron is hot and turn into what scares you the most. How fitting that it is Ganon holding the trident of power, same thing that he held in Link to the Past, that, of course, Link would be afraid of. I can't think of anything better that it could become. Well, aside from maybe what it does next. Meet Death Eye, his true form. Starting off, he is going to circle these arms around his body. You need to jump over them with the rock's feather. It is very tough to do otherwise. And you need to shoot his eye with an arrow. If you are quick, you can shoot his eye multiple times. But I just want to say this. Once again, as somebody who has many, many nightmares and has always had issues with them, what else would you imagine the creator of your own nightmares to look like than this? It's terrifying. It's got a huge eye. It's got these arms circling around it that just feel like you cannot escape them. It creates a bit of a vortex effect just from moving around. It's just downright terrifying. Even as an adult, I can say that this thing still creeps me out. Just the way that it moves, it's unnatural for everything else in this world. And that is how you make something truly frightening. He does have a very distinct weakness, though, that is not just his eye. If you hit him with the boomerang at just the right timing, he can possibly go down in a single hit. I'm not doing this here, but I just thought I should mention that just like all nightmares, it has a very distinct weakness. 
just need to be able to get over your fears and use what you have learned against him. And quite simply, not to take any seriousness out of this moment, but I think what we've learned the most is if something has an eyeball on it, you need to shoot it. So let's go ahead and see if we can get in a few more hits. I believe he will take 16 hits from a standard arrow to hit, do him in. Let's just keep jumping over these, not getting hit. Wait for him to open his eye once again. And finish him off. This island is going to disappear. Our world is going to disappear. Our world. Our world. Link, you have beaten all the nightmares. Climb the stairs before you. Hoot, young lad. I mean, Link, the hero. You have defeated the nightmares. You have proven your wisdom, courage, and power. As part of the Windfish's spirit, I am the guardian of his dream world. But one day, the nightmares entered the dream and began wreaking havoc. Then you, Link, came to rescue the island. I have always trusted in your courage to turn back the nightmares. Thank you, Link. My work is done. The Windfish will wake soon. Goodbye, Hoot. I am the Windfish. Long has been my slumber. In my dreams, an egg appeared and was surrounded by an island with people, animals, and an entire world. But verily, it be the nature of dreams to end. When I dust the waken, Koho Lint will be gone. Only the memory of this dreamland will exist in the waking world. Someday, thou may recall this island. That memory must be the real dream world. Come, Link. Let us awaken together. Play the eight instruments. Play the song of awakening.
let me just say that this game went from like to love in my book. Right there. That that ending was amazing. Just the song together with everything that was going on. Oh man, I, I, I really... I already like Link's Awakening, and I already told you how I think it's a metaphor for growing up. But that right there just sealed it for me. And... Yeah, I can't really say anything else. That's primarily what I think. I'm not really sure why the text credits are flickering, but I don't know, maybe some kind of limitation. But yes, that is The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. I enjoyed playing it for you guys, and I hope you enjoyed that whole... Overall, I thought it was a fun Let's Play. It wasn't... I wouldn't exactly say it was my best, mind you. Um, I still think my Majora's Mask series was better than this one, at the very least, and my Zelda ones. Because I, I did have a few hiccups along the way that I wasn't really proud of, like where I felt like I really should have known things and I just didn't do enough research or I just didn't, you know, look into things enough. But, I don't know, maybe that created a bit of sense of genuineness to it, I don't know. Um, the series definitely didn't get nearly as many views as Mario 64 DS did. That series is getting like crazy views, whereas this one, you know, I'm not saying that views matter to me all that much, I'm just saying that I think it's very clear which one people are more interested in, so... I'm just kind of saying, maybe some people didn't like that. Maybe some people did. I don't know. But what I'd like to say is that there is still one more video left to come. There is going to be episode Marin, where I go and show all the things we could have done with Marin that I didn't show or just flat out didn't know about, because there's some funny stuff there. And on top of that, I also will be showing a certain little detail that changes in the ending should you go through the entire game without dying. Uh, something that I did not accomplish in this run. I wanted to show both endings anyway, but there's a time and a place for that. And that is going to be in the very next episode of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. See you guys then. And I just want to tell you guys, that last dungeon we were in, it turtly rocked. And now it's time to wake the wind. Fish. After all, this is Link's awakening of him. Aren't these puns excellent? Okay, sorry. How about we get cracking?